Ever since I started this YouTube channel back in 2020, you guys have been asking me to cover the ooky spooky dead Bart story. So today I'll be diving into what it is, finding and locating where the story came from, who wrote it, and how the Simpsons creators may be trying to cover it up. We're through the looking glass here, people. So, how was it found, and what is it? First and foremost, Dead Bart is a creepy pasta story about a lost episode of The Simpsons in which Bart dies after falling from an airplane. This marks the reasoning why the show has a strange way of counting their episodes, because this one is missing, and it's thrown the entire series out of joint. Supposedly. The Lost episode was supposedly written entirely by Matt Groening. During the production of the first season, Matt started to act very strangely. He was quiet, nervous, and very morbid too. Reading this made me think of the dark black humour of Groening's comics Life in Hell, which dealt with themes of death, self-loathing, and social alienation. It's not hard to imagine that this is the same man who may have felt the same dark thoughts only three or four years later when The Simpsons was being produced. So it may just be plausible that he could have spawned this lost episode. The writer of this creepypasta claims they first heard about the episode at an event with David Silverman. When a member of the crowd asked about it, Silverman left the stage, ending the presentation hours early. Now, in terms of the production code of the episode, it was given the number 7G06, and the title, yeah, you guessed it, Dead Bart. The episode now labelled as 7G06 is Moaning Lisa, which was made later on and given Dead Bart's production code to hide the latter's existence from the records, aka Moaning Lisa replaced Dead Bart. To hide the episode even further, anyone who dares to inquire about it is instantly shunned from communicating with Matt Groening at events, premieres, press, etc, etc. But at one fan event, this lucky writer managed to follow Groening after a talk and stalked him right out of the building. When the fan mentioned the lost episode to Matt Groening, the colour drained from his face and he trembled in fear. When pushed for details, Groening was on the verge of tears, so grabbing a piece of paper, wrote something on it, and handed it back to the fan, begging to never mention the episode again. Not the technique I would use to try and get rid of a lost episode I never wanted anyone to see. But even so, the writer entered the address into the computer, and up came a site that was completely black except for a single yellow line of text, a download link. He clicked on the anonymous link and downloaded the video. This video made the PC go absolutely crazy, a virus had embedded itself and was going wild. The entire computer had to be rebooted, but prior to this, the fan copied the file onto a CD disc. So, what was on the disc? The episode starts off like any other, but had very poor quality animation. The first act was fairly normal, but the way the characters interacted was a little off. Homer seemed angrier, Marge seemed depressed, Lisa seemed anxious, and Bart seemed to have a genuine anger and hatred for his parents. The episode centred on the family going on a plane for a holiday trip, and Bart was falling around. However, as the plane was about 50 feet or so off the ground, Bart broke a window in the plane and was sucked out. The picture of Bart's corpse was barely recognisable, and the animators took full advantage of it not having to move, and so made an almost photorealistic image of his dead body. Now, even though not directly related, this did make me think of how Groening pitched the show to the industry as simply a drama in animation. He wanted the deep, raw emotions that is evident in his previous works. 
Let's not forget that Homer pushed around a boulder around town as a means to off himself in the episode Homer's Odyssey. The first series, probably the one that Groening had the closest relationship to, had very dark themes, so it's not impossible to imagine that Groening was unafraid of killing off one of his main characters. But back to the story, Act 1 ended with a shot of Bart's dead body, Act 2 entered with the sorrows and cries of Homer, Marge and Lisa at their kitchen table. The crying went on and on and on, it got more pained and sounded far more realistic. And you could hear a slow murmuring in the background and the characters and their words could barely be made out in the end. They were stretched, blurred, the image was becoming more and more warped, they looked more like deformed shadows with bright random colours thrown into them. This crime went on for all of Act 2, and so Act 3 opened with the title card signalling that a year had passed. Homer, Marge and Lisa obviously spent an entire year in mourning as they looked like skeletons and still sitting at the table. No signs of Maggie or the poor pets. The family set off to visit Bart's grave and on their journey Springfield was completely deserted and the houses became more and more decrepit. Reaching finally to the grave, Bart's body was just lying in front of his tombstone, looking just like it did at the end of Act 1, unburied. We then finally zoom out as the episode comes to a close and the tombstones in the background had the names of every Simpsons guest star on it. Some that no one had heard of in 1989, and some that haven't even been on the show yet, and certainly some that hadn't died by this point. But still, they all had death dates. For guests who died since, like Michael Jackson and George Harrison, the dates were when they would die. The credits were completely silent and seemed handwritten. The final image was the Simpsons family on their couch, like in the intros, but all drawn in hyper-realistic fashion, lifeless like in the style of Bart's corpse. Don't worry, you can crawl out from underneath your bed covers now, I'm gonna debunk this baby right here, right now. Now if you're thinking, well the episode isn't that lost, enter it into a browser and you are met with an abundance of versions. And that's exactly it, their versions. Fan-made representations inspired by this one story, they weren't dug out from the dark deep archives of Groening's basement. There's a few clues to really put your mind at rest. In the version listed on Creepypasta's wiki page posted by Super Bob Entertainment, it's basically a mashup of past episodes. Bart the General contained Bart's funeral, and there's other scenes taken from the funeral scene in a Tracy Ullman short. Just edited in a way to make it seem eerie, scary, and kinda jarring. And there's this one with a huge amount of views, posted by Adse Danjo. But alas, the whole video opening is from Bart the Genius, from the chalkboard gag to the Simpsons playing Scrabble. But all in all, these edits shouldn't be assumed as found footage, but fan-made footage edited and created to portray the original creepypasta story. Which I think is pretty awesome, it just shows how effective the written story was to make this much of an impact and inspire an influx of Simpsons fans to expand this creepy creepy theory. But the real mystery is, who wrote it? Well, you want a name, do you? How does John Carlo Bellotto sound? It probably doesn't ring a bell so far, but I'll tell you why I think this is the same guy who wrote the dead Bart creepy pasta. Back when researching the topic, I came across Channel Frederator's video, and as I dug deeper into the comments, I came across a user entitled SNES Master 5 claiming to be KI. Now, on the bottom of both the original Dead Bart Creepypasta story and the follow up too, both are uploaded by a user called KI. So, was this commenter really KI, the author of this very creepy pasta? Well, in a thread of other doubters of this guy's real identity, he sent this link. And no, it didn't crash my computer, but it did prove that this was his account. This account was on Game FAQs, where the original story was actually posted all those years ago. 
And what did the author have to say about the story and the whole blow up about it? Well, for the record, I never actually claimed the episode was real. It was always presented as a creepy pasta. I wrote it for fun after reading Suicide Mouse. I had no idea it would get so much attention. I have several other creepypastas online and a short book on Amazon called Only Nightmares, written in that style. So after a quick Amazon check, I found the book and it turns out he's written a whole lot of other stories too, even for Futurama. Now I really want to get in touch with KI to get an interview because quite honestly, I love this story. But unfortunately, he hasn't really been active on any platforms in a very long time. So I guess I'll buy his book and read a little bit more in his style. But do not think that this video is done and dusted. I have reason to believe that the creators may be wanting to hide this story. And here's my theory, a Simpsons theory. A couple of years ago, this theory did another tour of the World Wide Web and you could enter Deadbot episode into your browser and up came countless YouTube videos, adaptations and Reddit posts. Now I believe the creators want to do something about it, send a message back through the power of SEO. And so in September 2018, the episode Bart's Not Dead was released, the very first episode of season 30. It was around the 29th season that Dead Bar episode clicks were generating a lot of traffic, and by this time the studio would have already lined up fully formed episodes. So season 30's episode 1 would be the first opportunity to intercept this lost episode. So what happens now when you enter Dead Bar episode into Google? That's right, you get Bart's Not Dead. I feel the creators were trying to override the SEO for Dead Bart. We already know how the creators can get a little irked by the whole Simpsons prediction thing, so maybe upset by the rumour that one of their main characters, and arguably their most popular character, dies. And guess what? There's actually proof to this theory. In an interview with Entertainment Weekly, Al Jean, writer and showrunner for The Simpsons, confirmed that the episode Bart's Not Dead was a wink to the ancient Simpsons urban legend. As quoted by Jean, the title of the episode is Bart's Not Dead, and I guess is a slight allusion to the dead Bart rumour that was untrue in season 1. He's definitely not dead, he's very much alive. But let me know what you think in the comments. And lastly, I'd love to say a big thank you to my newest Flying Hellfish recruit, Richard Hocking. Thank you so much for helping support the channel, it really does mean a huge amount to me.